it seems like more and more the biblical understanding of gender and sexuality is under attack. One example of that is a video we're going to see today from a fellow on TikTok who's trying to convince children that there's no such thing as gender, that we're just spirits floating from one to another. We can be whatever we want to be. This is becoming much more of a concern, especially regarding children and the indoctrination of children. And in today's video, I'm going to address all of that and give us a little bit of perspective in how we can enter these conversations in a biblical way. Let's dive in. But first, a lot of you may already know that YouTube does not like me making content like this. Uh, monetization gets suppressed, the algorithm gets suppressed, but the reason that I can continue to make content that I believe is important for this cultural moment is because of the people on Patreon and your guys' support in uh, helping me do what I do in equipping people to follow Jesus daily. So if you want to get behind my mission, support on Patreon, click the link in my description. Thank you guys so much for your support. Now, on to the video. Now, without further ado, buckle up. I want to talk to the kids. Parents, watch the video and then hand the phone over to the young kids. Hi there. Um, I get asked a lot, are you a boy or a girl? And I love that question. And so I wanted to just tell you, sometimes human beings are more than boy or girl. Sometimes we're something else. Sometimes we're both. Sometimes um, we kind of float in between, and sometimes we're a boy, sometimes we're a girl, because um, human beings are creatures, and we're wild and exciting. But I want to ask you um, a favor. If you see a kid like me, or an adult like me, would you be extra nice to them? Would you do me a favor and be very, very kind? Um, yeah, like anybody, we can feel lonely, and so if you're kind to us, it would be really, really important. Okay, let's get a couple things straight here. This is a man with a beard in lipstick saying, can I talk to your children? If that doesn't creep you out, I don't know what's going on, but that definitely creeps me out. I can have great compassion for this man, understanding that he is experiencing deep gender confusion, but to dispose of truth in this very moment would be a greater disservice to them. Like if I'm only looking out for, okay, I got to say what's going to appease them and, um, and not trigger them and not seem as mean to them. And I'm just going to kind of like skirt around the issue and be like, yeah, no, everything's okay. Kind of affirm the delusion. That is a greater disservice to them. Now, I'm not saying that you go in with guns a-blazing and you're hostile and you're angry and you're hateful towards people. But the problem is the definition of hate has been so distorted. I want us to understand a difference here. I can um, accept this man. I can accept that he is a uh, creation of God made in his image, that he is dignity and he is worth and, and I can love him in that way. Um, but yet I do not extend my approval of his behavior. So I can accept him as a person, a person, but I do not accept his behaviors. That doesn't mean I hate him, right? It used to be that that was an extension of love. Think about a parent and a child relationship. Uh, a child you know, can do all sorts of things. They can hit their uh, brother or sister. They can steal cookies from the cookie jar. They can, uh, you know, mess up the house and, and do something that they're not supposed to be doing, right? And in that moment, the parent's going to be, okay, yeah, there's some discipline that's needed here, but does the love of the child cease? No. Does the parent extend approval of that child's behavior? No, there is a distinction there. They can uh, uh, they can accept the child and love them, and yet that actually motivates them to have disapproval for the things that are not only harmful for them, but harmful for other people around them. So they, they are actually seeking their best. That is what true love is. In a friend context, right, which is more similar to what we have here, a friend context, if a friend is, let's say, putting a bet on some, like a risky bet, and they're putting down their life savings, and they were to say, hey, I Isaac, I'm doing this. I'm really excited about it. It's going to be awesome. Would a good friend say, oh yeah, do it. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Um, you know, I totally affirm and, and support and approve of all your decisions because that's what it is to love somebody, you know, so obviously keep doing what you're doing. No, that's not loving at all, right? Like if my friend were to tell me that, I'd be like, hey friend, I love you. And because I love you, I'm going to tell you this is a stupid decision. This is 
dumb. This, do not do this. Like, this is not going to be worth it. Uh, don't make this decision, right? That is what love is is. And so in this kind of context, somebody comes to me and says, Hey, Isaac, uh, I'm struggling. I feel like I, I'm not the gender that I'm supposed to be. I would approach them with great compassion and love and wanting to hear, okay, wh what's going on here and, and getting them help as well. People that can walk through this um, with them, but also speaking the truth and understanding that this will not satisfy you like this, that you believe that this is a solution to this pain and unease in your soul, your desire for love and acceptance and identity and, and trying Trying to find out what might fulfill that. This is not the answer. This will actually make it worse. And I speak that because I love you. I say that because I love you. It is not out of hate. Now, I have to mention, because after watching this video, I hope you're just as disturbed as I am that he's trying to target children. I can have compassion for somebody that's struggling on their own, and I do have compassion for them. But at the same time, there is great uh, anger, honestly, righteous anger at somebody that would try to lead little children astray. The Bible actually says that it would be better for these folks that a millstone were tied around their neck and for them to be cast into the sea. That is a stern warning, but that is what is going on in our culture now today. You think about in public schools, so many videos have come out of this propaganda, this uh, indoctrination that is taking uh, attack on our children that are being sent there. And if you are a Christian parent, I would just appeal to you, do not send your kids to these schools. Do not send your kids into these environments. I don't care if you think that, oh man, my, my kid's so smart and they're so mature and they're so godly. They're going to be able to be a witness to all these people. You think your kid's going to be able to wit be a witness in this su such a hostile environment? Your eight-year-old's going to be able to be that witness for Christ and preach the gospel? Your kid is just trying to figure things out for themselves, and yet they're put in this environment where debauchery and perversion is perpetrated on them day and night, especially in this month. And so I would just encourage you. I'm a huge advocate for homeschooling. I know some people, they they like, like you know Christian schools too. I've seen so many Christian schools compromise as well. So if that's what you're doing, make sure your Christian school isn't compromising in, this er in these areas. But look, friends, uh, you can have compassion on somebody that is struggling with these things. And I, if this fellow were in front of me, I, I'd listen to him. I, I, I'd accept extend my, my love and, and acceptance of him as a person, um, but also calling him to a greater identity in Christ and calling him to repentance, understanding that this selfishness and this pride that is motivating him pursuing his desires um, is not going to lead him into somewhere that is good and that's beneficial. And also the idea and the fact that he's leading little children astray and seeking to indoctrinate them with this worldview that's not something I can be a support, be a, 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 in support of. And uh, the Bible says to love your enemies. It doesn't say not to have enemies. And anybody that would come against children and say speak lies to them that are so fundamental to reality that would just get, you know, it's like total gaslighting. The idea that men and women that doesn't exist, it's total gaslighting. We see this in this next clip. A lot of people want to divide the world into boys and girls, men and women, he and she. I'm neither of those things. I'm a they. One of the reasons that people want to divide the world into only he and she is so that they can judge people, so they can be mean to people, so they can bully people, and it's all made up. This is the kind of baggage that Christians are walking in with when they enter these conversations, that every time they speak up for God's design of men and women, that is seen as hateful, that is seen as mean, and as Christians, yeah, we should not be hateful. That's not part of the deal. Jesus is not, Jesus' way is not the way of hate. We're called to love even those we disagree with. But at the same time, their definition of what hate is, is so distorted. The idea that if you oppose their behavior and what they, the choices that they have made, that is hate. That is mean. That is not a lot of ways to get around that. When you have opportunities, what I would encourage you to do is say, hey, look, it's not that I hate you and it's not that I I have this in vendetta against, um, you know, trans people or whatever. It's like, no, we have all sinned. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. We all have these desires in our hearts that we want to 
pursue things that are not good, that are not godly, that are according to our flesh. And Jesus says to lay those things down and to pick up our cross and follow him. That we need to die to those things. That that sin is going to be put on the cross, is put on Jesus, and he's going to be giving us a new identity in him. Now, I don't want you to get the wrong idea from this video. Often we can see the issues of LGBTQ, trans issues, Pride Month as simply issues. These are people that are broken and they're looking for hope. They're looking for love. They're looking for connection. They're struggling with pride and selfishness that's leading them down this path of just kind of self-liberation and trying to separate themselves from any kind of moral foundation. These folks, they need Jesus. This isn't just an entity that we need to conquer or a movement that needs to be defeated, but these are people that need the transforming power of Jesus in their lives. So it reminds me of a time a friend asked me, he said, Isaac, uh, aren't Christians the one who, ones who hate gay people? And he knew I was a Christian. We were on the same basketball team together. And I was able to explain to him a little bit that, hey, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We all have desires that are incongruent with um, God's ways and God's design. And we're called to lay those things down at the cross, to uh, repent of those things, to die to those things, to deny those desires in pursuit of Christ and, and to receive his forgiveness ultimately and a restored relationship with God. I explained that to him. He, you know, shook his head. He's like, okay, he's following along. He didn't change his mind, but at the same time, I understood that God is going to be the one to transform his heart. In any of these conversations, that's our prayer that God would meet these folks where they're at. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. It would be so amazing if we got to 200,000 subscribers on this video here. Pass this video off to your friends um, if you think they might benefit from it, and we can get there in no time flat. Thank you to those who have been following me for years and years, supporting me in what I'm doing here. It is an amazing honor and a blessing to be able to speak into your life each and every week. Um, and until next time, God bless.